we have seen the hormonal control now let us see the nervous control so to remind you we started with this concept of uh, homeostasis and we saw that homeostasis involves the nervous system and the endocrine system the nervous system uses a system of the neurons and the endocrine system involves the endocrine glands which releases the hormones to bring the body back into its normal levels now what is the difference between the hormonal and the nervous system is that the hormonal system releases hormones which are chemical messengers secreted by the endocrine glands they are secreted into the blood travel to the target organ the target organ has receptors and hormones bind to the receptors and triggers a response and it produces a slower but a long term response on the other hand the nervous system uses a system of neurons which sends electrical impulses to produce a response the message is transmitted via electrical impulses the response produces localized and impulses do not travel large distances but the response is quicker but short term so you should know this difference between hormones and nervous how it works and which one is more quicker and effective now there is a master gland the master gland is a pituitary why it is a master gland because it controls the other gland of the body it controls the follicle stimulating hormone which are responsible for uh management of menstruation and reproduction antidiuretic hormone is also controlled by the pituitary gland which maintains the water level of the body and thyroid stimulating hormone is also controlled by the pituitary which Uh, maintains the metabolic levels of the body okay so it's very important to know that pituitary is a master gland and why is it a master gland now to explain why is it a master gland you should know what uh, hormones it control and how it works so pituitary con uh, controls the follicle stimulating hormone which works at the ovaries and males makes the female sex hormones estrogen and that is responsible for the secondary sexual characters and the development of egg and the menstrual cycle thyroid stimulating hormone released by the pituitary works on the thyroid gland stimulate the glands to release thyroxine and the thyroxine affects liver and kidneys and controls the metabolism and the antidiuretic hormone targets the kidney which controls the water level by causing reabsorption of water adrenal gland releases adrenaline which targets liver and heart and prepares the body for fight and flight testes releases the hormone testosterone which uh, targets the male reproductive organ and develops secondary sexual characters pancreas releases insulin and glucagon the target organ is the liver and the insulin decreases the blood glucose level and the glucagon increases the blood glucose level ovaries releases estrogen and progesterone which targets the female reproductive organs controls the development of the egg menstrual cycle and develops secondary sexual characters so these are some of the examples of the hormones with their glands their target organs and their effect and you should remember them all okay next we have is how the blood glucose level is maintained in the body and this is an example of glucose homeostasis now this works by the pancreas and the pancreas releases two hormones called insulin and glucagon glucagon you need to remember insulin lowers the blood glucose level and glucagon increases the blood glucose level so after meals what happens the blood glucose level suddenly increases so what does pancreas do it releases insulin now insulin has these effects it increases the permeability of the cells to take glucose so that more glucose enters the cells so that blood glucose level can go down if the body does not require any more glucose it converts all the excess glucose into a storage carbohydrate which is a glycogen it also converts the glucose into the fats and stops the breakdown of fat so that all these factors can results in decrease in glucose level So this is how the glucose metabolism works when the blood glucose level rises the pancreas releases insulin the insulin does all these factors and makes the blood level glucose level to be normal on the other hand if the blood glucose level is too low then the pancreas releases glucagon and the glucagon does all the things opposite to insulin so you need to remember glucagon is the hormone which increases the blood glucose level and glycogen is the stored carbohydrate which is made in the liver where excess glucose is converted into glycogen 
Now, what happens if your body glucose level is not controlled? When the body glucose level is not controlled, it can lead to diabetes. And there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is insulin dependent. As in this case, the body does not produce insulin. Type 2 is insulin independent because in this case, body do produce insulin, but your body is not responding to it. Your body becomes resistant to insulin. So in type 1, it is caused by damage to pancreas or by some autoimmune disorder or by accident, there's a damage to the pancreas. Type 2 is caused by poor lifestyle and diet. In type 1 diabetes, the person can be given insulin injections. In type 2, it is treated with lifestyle changes and a balanced diet. Type 1 is most common in young ages, where type 2 is common in obese people. Type 1 can be genetic and type 2 is mostly environmental. In type 1, drugs might not be required. We just require insulin injections. Whereas in type 2, there are some drugs are taken to make the body to respond to insulin. Okay, so you should know the differences between the type 1 and type 2. So what are the treatments for type 1 diabetes? Insulin injections. Remember, we need to take insulin injection. We cannot take insulin tablets because insulin is a protein hormone and protein can be digested in the stomach. The insulin goes to the blood and it converts the excess glucose into the glycogen and control the blood glucose level. In type 1 diabetes, people are asked to take less carbohydrates. And if in case there are a lot of problems in managing that pancreatic transplant, pancreatic stem cell transplant or using stem cell to regenerate pancreatic cell are some of the future uh, cures for maintaining type 1 diabetes. For type 2 balanced diet, regular exercise, weight management, taking drug to increase sensitivity of pancreas to insulin or taking more insulin injections with the thought that increased concentration might increase responsiveness are the possible management techniques to maintain the type 2 diabetes. Okay, so you should know the difference between both the types of diabetes and how we control both of them. Now this insulin uh, maintenance or the maintenance of water level, which we'll be seeing later, is an example of negative feedback. What is negative feedback? Negative feedback is when the level of anything rises above optimum, like the glucose concentration, the body tries to decrease it. And if the level of anything decreases below optimum, the body tries to increase it. So body is always doing negative or opposite to what has happened and this is known as a negative feedback for example if the blood glucose level goes down then the body releases glucagon that increases the blood glucose level if the blood glucose level goes up the body releases insulin to decreases the blood glucose level okay so i hope this example of negative feedback and what is negative feedback is clear to you now you should know there's another hormone called adrenaline which is a fight or a flight hormone it is a stress hormone emergency hormone what effect it does to your body it increases your heart rate it increases your breathing rate it increases the blood flow it dilates the pupil it divide it diverts the blood flow away from the gut and it increases the blood flow to oxygen of oxygen to the brain so that you become more alert and take quicker action okay so you should know the effects of adrenaline now next we have to do the human reproductive system the male reproductive and the female reproductive system the male reproductive system it consists of a penis there's a urethra there is a bladder there's a seminal vesicle there's a prostate gland and then there's a testis which produces the sperm which is there in a scrotum the sperms are released to these uh, sperm ducts and the seminal vesicles it releases semen which mixes with the sperm and it is it goes out through this urethra and this male reproductive organ testes it releases a hormone called testosterone which is responsible for secondary sexual characters and the female reproductive system is the system of the two ovaries and then there's a fallopian tube the ovaries releases the egg into the fallopian tube which travels into the uterus and then there's a cervix and the vagina and the female uh, hormone is the estrogen which is released by the ovaries and that is responsible for the secondary sexual characters. Now it's a very important hormonal uh, mechanism in the body which is a menstrual cycle which is purely hormonal. Now menstrual cycle is a cycle for 28 days and in these 28 days, these are the changes that takes place in the body. So you can see this in this diagram. 
from day one to five is where the bleeding stage happens, which is the menstrual stage. There's a shedding of the uterus lining and you can see all the hormones, they are at the lower level. From day five to day 14 is the egg maturation phase. So that is a follicular phase where egg is matured in the ovary and the hormones responsible for the maturation and development of the egg is the follicle stimulating hormone. So you can see that the follicle stimulating hormone is started to increase in concentration. Then at day 14, the egg is released into the fallopian tube and this egg is released and this release of egg is caused by a hormone called luteinizing hormone so you can see there's a sudden surge of this luteinizing hormone at the day 14. now after day 14 to day 18 there's a luteal phase in which there's a sudden increase in the progesterone and the estrogen hormone which maintain so there's an increase in progesterone and the estrogen level because progesterone and estrogen are responsible in maintaining the uterus lining. So they maintain the uterus lining, they make it thick so that they can support the fertilized egg and cause the pregnancy. But if in between 14 and the 28 days the egg is not fertilized, then the level of the progesterone suddenly falls and it leads us to the shedding of the uterus lining causing menstruation and it starts with the day one to day four okay so you should know what are the changes that takes place in all these days what is the phase and what are the hormones that are involved so what are the hormones that are involved in menstruation these are pure hormones follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone estrogen and progesterone Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are released by the pituitary and they are required in the first 14 days. Day 1 to day 14, it's the follicle stimulating hormones which causes the maturation of the eggs in the follicle and stimulates the projection of estrogen and the luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. Then the estrogen is released, stimulated by the FSH and from day 14 to day 28, it develops a uterus lining and stimulates more LH but inhibits FSH. And the progesterone is released by the empty egg follicle in the ovaries and it is responsible for maintaining the uterus lining from day 14 to day 28 and prepare for pregnancy. It inhibits both LH and FSH so no menstruation happens during pregnancy. Okay, so I hope these various hormones of menstruation are clear to you. Now. To prevent fertilization, there's a contraception method and the contraception method, they either prevents the sperm to meet with the egg or if the sperm meets the egg, they prevent the implantation of the fertilized egg into the uterus, thus preventing the pregnancy. Now, this can be achieved by the barrier method. The barrier method includes using diaphragms or condoms to prevent the sperm to meet the egg or the hormonal method which prevents the egg to mature or prevents the implantation of the eggs in the uterus or the chemical method which uses spermicide to kill the sperms or the intrauterine device which prevents the embryo from planting or surgical methods which provides permanent contraception. Okay, so these are the various contraception methods and they can come in a long note maker or a small question so you should know what are the various contraception methods that we have. Next we have is how contraception works. So in contraception, uh, there are three major techniques involved. The contraceptive pill, the intrauterine devices, and the surgical method. Now what are contraceptive pills? The contraceptive pills contains mix of female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. We call them mix pill. They prevent the release of FSH, so thereby they prevent the maturation of egg. They also make thick mucus in the cervix, which prevents the entry of the sperm. They also prevent the uterine uh, lining development, so they prevent the implantation. Some pills, they just contain progesterone, and at times, the contraceptive implant is also inserted. So there, you don't have to take the pills regularly, and this implant slowly releases progesterone and maintains the uterus lining. Or the contraceptive patch is also used, which absorbs and mix the hormones into the blood. 
they have these side effects like blood pressure they have to be taken daily and they cause changes in the menstrual pattern on the other hand intrauterine devices are the mechanical devices like copper t which is inserted into the uterus it releases copper ions which are toxic to the sperms and this device also prevent the implanting of the embryo into the uterus and some of these iud's intrauterine device they also releases progesterone which works the same way as the con progesterone pills which prevents the release of fsh preventing the mature duration of egg they make thick mucus in the cervix to prevent the entry of sperms and they also prevents the uterine lining development preventing implantation but iud's have side effects like infections or internal bleeding then we have the permanent contraception which are mostly taken by the people who already have kids they do surgical methods which is vasectomy which is the male sterilization and tubectomy which is a female sterilization in vasectomy the sperm ducts are cut and sealed so that sperms cannot enter the urethra which prevents fertilization and in tubectomy the ov ducts are cut and tied to prevent the release of egg which prevents the fertilization the side effects of this is it is permanent so you cannot resume your fertility back but with contraceptive pills you can stop the pills and the hormone levels can be normal and in the intrauterine devices you can remove the device and then the fertility is restored now there are a lot of infertility problems that happens in people the first problem is the ovulation problem where the eggs do not mature or the uh, eggs is not ovulating in those cases the women are given fertility drugs which are mix of fsh and lh so follicle stimulating hormones causes the development of the follicles and luteinizing hormones stimulates the ovulation at times the uh, there is a tube that is faulty so that the embryo is not able to come to the uterus or there's an implantation problem in that we perform an in vitro fertilization where embryos develop outside and it is implanted back into the uterus for the development of the pregnancy and in the third case even implantation happens but pregnancy development doesn't take place in that case there are problem with the uterus so the surrogate mother where the fertilized egg is implanted into another mother who gives birth can be a solution now what is in vitro in vitro fertilization which is very promising and that has given babies to many of the people who do not have babies so what do we do is we first give fertility drugs and stimulate ovulation then we collect the egg and the sperms and we put it into a petri dish and we cause the fertilization to occur when the fertilization is occurred we cause the zygote to divide and develop into the embryo the embryo is then taken and inserted surgically into the uterus lining okay and then this develops into a baby so this is what is the concept of in vitro fertilization but it has problem as it is expensive it can results into multiple embryos it can result into premature birth it can result into birth with disability and it can notification make sure everything which is there in the specification is crystal clear to you now and you should do exam question on this topic which can be easily found on my website the link is shared with you in the description box below all these notes are there on my website you can click on them and read them for a quick revision if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like comment and share this video and also click on the bell icon because if you click on the bell icon you'll be notified as soon as i put a new video and if there's any specific video you want me to put a lesson on please leave a comment below and i'll make sure i'll have that up before your exam in case you have any doubts in any of these concept mentioned in this video leave a comment below or you can come to my website where we have a 24/7 chat support till your exam to answer all your queries okay so i'll see you next in my next video till then happy revising